Mmm, creative nature. I'm going to be making an organic apple cornbread. So let's get started. Right, we pour our cornbread mixture into a bowl. And before we do anything else, according to the instructions, it says to give it a mix around. And that is just to get rid of any sort of lumpy bits. Because we do not want lumps, do we? Mmm, no, I... It says it's organic and it smells kind of like a like a garden. I don't <laughs> I don't know what sort of ingredients are in this. Um, but anyway, we will soon find out because the proof of the pudding is in the eating, of course. Right, so now we are going to add our other ingredients, and they are 50 ml of vegetable or sunflower oil. So in it goes into the middle of our mixture. 200 ml of milk. I'm just using regular semi-skimmed milk, cow's milk. In that goes. Like that. And for the apple, we have got a tub of 100 um, grams of apple puree. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to plop in like that. It is actually quite liquidy. I thought it was more solid. Mmm. Very nice indeed. Okay, so now I've got my trusty little pink whisk as usual, so I'm going to mix this together. Now, the recipe did say to be very careful with the mixing because you don't want to overdo it, otherwise it can become a bit stodgy. But I don't want to get lumps in it, so I will mix it thoroughly until we get rid of any lumpy bits and also to make sure we get all the bits and pieces in. But it doesn't need too much of a mix, just as long as you get it all together. Now, what I've been doing in the meantime, um, I have heated up a cake tin with uh, some oil in it, um, or butter you can use just to, to, to grease it. And it's been in the oven for about five minutes, so it's already pretty hot, which means when we put this in, it's got a fighting chance of cooking. And then it goes into the oven for 25 minutes at 200 Celsius. Right, so let's get the cake tin out of the oven. Make sure you wear a glove so you can see that it's nicely oiled there. We'll set this over here. And let's get spinning in the mixture. This is where it gets difficult because I want to show you what I'm doing and also try not to get it all over my lovely Ready Steady Cook apron. So here we go. And if there's any left over, I'm going to get to lick it, I think. Get it all in. I'm going to help you with that. No, it's okay. I thought this might happen. So I've got another, I've got like a a, a regular wooden spoon here just to get all the bits from round the... more from up there. Yes, waste not, want not, Paul, I know. <laughs> but we do want a little left over, don't we, for the cook to, to lick the raw ingredients. I think that's good enough. Right, okay, so we just smooth it out. Perfect. Right. Can I touch that? Oh! <laughs> Get the gloves again. And into the oven it goes, as I say, for 25 minutes at 200 Celsius. Twenty-five minutes have passed, so let's take a look. Ooh! Oh, I can smell it. Look at that. Now, it would be tempting to tuck into that straight away, wouldn't it? But oh no, 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 no. We must leave it here on a wire rack. Now, I'm going to try to ease it out of this cake tin. I'm not going to show you that bit. And we'll come back a little bit later, well, in a few seconds for you, and we will see what it's like. Come 
on, Paul, break off from whatever you're doing for a moment and have some of this lovely cornbread. <laughs> now, tell me, why do people eat cornbread in the US? I mean, what, what's the story behind it? I think because corn is in abundance, because a lot of the states do have a lot of corn as um, their crop. So, Such as, yeah, I mean, it's people in the US talk about corn in a different way to what they talk about it here. When you talk about corn here, you're talking about corn in the cob. But is it the same? Does, does this corn come from corn in the cob? Is it the same? Or is it, or is it the um, is it the plant rather than the actual vegetable? No, well, I think it's because they want to make uh, usage out of it. Okay, and what sort of occasion would you have it on? A Fourth of July, you would have it on Thanksgiving, you would have it at picnics. But it's usually just a little bit on the side of something so else. So it's like an accompaniment. Okay. Well, let's tuck in and see what it is like. Now oh, come on, don't be shy, you've got a knife and fork there. Should I eat on this side? Yeah, and make sure you show the viewers at home what you're, what you're eating. So here we go. Look at that. That's how it turned out. I'm going to try it. It's still slightly warm. Mmm. Mmm. Do we need to add some butter to well, this? Well, I was just going to say, it doesn't taste that bad, but it is quite dry. Mmm. And I was actually worried because when we put the ingredients in, I thought there was too many wet ingredients. We had the milk, we had the oil. Wow. And we had the apple puree. But it actually looks quite moist, but it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't taste moist it's at all. It's an illusion, I think. Mmm. But I think that, served with a bit of butter, or even if you're someone who likes cheese, and I don't, that would be nice. Do you know, people have this with ribs and stuff, mm. and also coleslaw, which we have in the fridge. Oh, well, there's an idea for later today. Okay, well, tuck in. Okay, I feel, I feel like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Mmm. Mm. Well done for making this. Mm, thank you. Okay, you can go back to whatever you're doing now. <laughs> thank you for watching our show today. If you like what you see, then please like, comment, and subscribe. Keep watching. Welcome to the fridge. Stacking the fridge could be very confusing and you might not be sure how to stack it. I'm going to show you what to do, what to look out for, and what to avoid. So, we have an empty fridge. So, let's get the meats out of the way. There's bacon, there's steak, and there's also... So, fish, so follow me, all of this will go in the bottom shelf, why? Because it's raw and you don't really want to contaminate everything. So if it was higher you mean that raw stuff could drip onto cooked stuff? So. Everything that's raw, we're going to be putting on the bottom. Um, things on top is things that is already cooked, like vegetables that you can have raw and milk and any mixed salad that you buy from the shop, it's already prepared. So you don't really want the uncooked stuff to soil the cooked stuff. It isn't the best idea to put milk at the side of the door, but once it's opened, the milk will leak for me. So that's why I have to have it on the side of the door. It is a common practice to have eggs in the refrigerator in the US, but here in the UK, they say that the change in temperature could cause salmonella. So it's discouraged.